motion to ask, to ask any questions. And, um, and Joy will be monitoring the chat while I'm um, giving the presentation here, and then we'll switch. So let's get going. So first, our introductions. I'm Vernon Rodriguez. I'm the new executive director of the MTM program. And feel free to check me out on LinkedIn and connect. I uh, came into this program very excited because I have been uh, 30 years in industry, medical device development, working for large companies, as well as startups such as Boston Scientific, Edwards Life Sciences, and a division right now is called Abbott Vascular, which used to be Guidant Corporation. And a couple of startups, most recently one that was purchased by um, Boston Scientific, a little division called um, a BTG, British Technology Group. I was in the division that worked on pulmonary devices. So um, that was fairly new for me because I've been mostly in cardiovascular devices. And I'm also a Cal Berkeley grad, so I'm really excited to be um, here and running this program. And I'd like to introduce uh, Joy Ahn. Joy, do you want to say a couple of words? Sure. Uh, my name is Joy Ahn. I'm the master's program manager. So a lot of student facing and behind the scenes admin for this program. Um, and just come to you with like 15 years about higher ed experience. So um, been with Berkeley now on and off for five years <laughs> uh, and excited to be part of this program. It's a really awesome degree program that I'm sure that's why you're all attending today is to learn more, so. Welcome. Okay, so now I'd like to introduce our um, student ambassadors. Uh, we've got a couple of them on the call with us. Um, I know Aisha has a class, so she can't join us, but she um, has a BS in general engineering from Smith College. Um, Ahmad, if you could give a brief brief intro of a, um, a minute or so. Yeah, thank you, uh, Verna. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Ahmad. Um, I am a current MTM student. Um, and I got my bachelor's degree uh, in May from San Jose State University in biomedical engineering. I also worked at uh, Varian's, a Siemens Health and Nears company in regulatory affairs for about a year as well. And um, I'm very excited to be here and tell you all about this program from my perspective and um, give a little, some insights to you all. Great. And I know um, Ionica is also with us. So Ionica, can you? Give a brief intro about yourself. Sure, thanks, Verna. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ayanika Makadangdang. I graduated from the University of Hawaii at Manoa um, with a BS in biological engineering. Um, and my background is really in research. I've been doing research all throughout undergrad. And so being immersed in kind of this innovation industry is something very new to me and something I already love. And like Ahmad, I'm very excited to speak with you about the program. Great, thank you both. Um, Christian is also part of our program. He's not joining us today, but what I wanna emphasize is these students are available to you to answer questions. So we'll have a little bit of Q and A at, at the end of this. Um, and we'll also be setting up some office hours in November and December, and we will email you uh, that information soon. So let's get going. So why translational medicine? Um, this is a really a good example here because uh, this was one of the first molecular tests for COVID-19. Um, and this is a technology that actually came from a UC Berkeley lab. Um, MTM students actually worked um, on a small part of this in the uh, 2013 and 14 timeframe. Obviously it then got translated to a COVID test. So um, there was actually then lots of pivots and change in direction and then eventual success so that now Lucera um, has offered this as a um, COVID-19 test. So what's really important is a lot of bioengineers and um, myself included from decades ago, you know, go into school, you learn a lot about research, you learn a lot of foundational information that's really important. And if some of you maybe have um, even had a biology or maybe a um, life sciences, a pre-med or um, even a nursing program, a lot of times people then want to go into industry or they want to understand um, more fully what it takes to bring a product, um, a technology to market. And that really is what this translational medicine program is all about. Um, 
So this just is an example of how you take something from a lab such as UC, UC Berkeley and then um, go through the path to make it a, a product. So, so what is then translational medicine and how is this program gonna prepare you to be a medical innovator? Um, that the goal of this program is to answer those two questions. So if those two don't get fully answered, then please um, make sure that you ask questions at the end here. And uh, in terms of specifics, of course, to some more students that are in the program, um, they can answer for you what that's like for them right now. Let me go to the next slide here. So this is just a little um, cute kind of cartoon that shows you that basically translational medicine, if you look it up on Wikipedia, it's basically what takes things from the bench top um, over to bedside or to clinical. So it's that it bridges the gap between what is going on in the lab or in, the, um, in research um, institutions and how do we bring that into clinical use? It goes from concept to clinic. And this is program is gonna give you the tools um, and technologies so that you'll be able to do that uh, once you get out of this program. And translational medicine can include everything from um, drugs to medical devices to um, uh, combination devices, you know, drug and, um, and device and also in in vitro testing. So all of those things are what you might end up working on, but you'll definitely end up learning about. So universities are a great starting point. Um, they can help academic discoveries, but it's not automatic, okay? So great ideas are important, but it's not enough. There is a lot to navigate to be able to get something onto the market. And that's where, you know, companies come into play. So the thing that can be tricky though, is that, it can be like a maze to be able to understand, especially as you come out of school with maybe an engineering degree or a science degree like biology or chemistry. You're in say a company and you're like, what is all this terminology? What is all this process? Um, there's a lot to learn those first few years. And we hope that this program is what, is what it takes to um, be able to make that a lot easier of a transition for you. So first of all, there are business decisions that are extremely important. The product just doesn't sell itself. So what is the market for this technology? You need to know how um, you're gonna pay for your idea. Is it gonna be reimbursable? Is it gonna be something that's out of pocket for patients? And you need to understand the flow of money through the system, okay? So even if the goal is to be cheap, such as global health or frugal, um, someone has to pay for it, okay? And we, in our program, will teach you all about um, CMS, insurance, foundations, um, and things like that that you need to, to understand so that you know what your strategy is um, when you're building your business. So um, the other area that's important is that the health care system itself in the country or the region that you're uh, selling your product also has a huge amount of effect on the success um, and has a role to play. So you're gonna um, innovate for the people, for the patients, but then who is going to use it? Is that going to be a patient user? Is it going to be a physician? Is it going to be some kind of healthcare worker? Or is it a combination of all three? So you need to uh, learn how to do needs finding and understand who is the customer. So uh, also understanding that the customer is not just the uh, clinical workflow, which is what we'll teach you about, but there are other customers that are out there that are huge stakeholders, such as the FDA um, and uh, regulatory um, bodies. So um, safety and efficacy are what the uh, FDA and other regulatory bodies look for. Um, they are largely good things, okay? So um, safety culture and regulation grew out of past mistakes. Some of you may have seen um, The Bleeding Edge. If not, then I uh, recommend that you watch it on Netflix. It really gives you um, kind of a wide open eye view of how things can go wrong. Um, and there's in any industry, there are bad actors. Uh, if you wanna get into the medical device industry, you wanna understand um, basically what the regulations are, what you have to do to appropriately 
launch a product commercially in the mark in the market and sometimes new technologies can struggle to fit into existing regulatory structures so we will teach you about classification about um, strategies for uh, making your regulation pathway smooth um, and a lot of times this is what engineers end up learning on the job but sometimes that can cause a lot of trouble um, you can make small choices that you feel are small choices along the way that can have a big impact later. So maybe as an engineer, you say, oh, I'm gonna change this. I'm in a startup, it's a small company. Uh, we've got a product on the market. Oh, we need to change a material. Changing material is not a small choice. That means there's going to be a lot of more testing, um, evidence-based um, either benchtop and or animal studies uh, for, for many changes like that that seem uh, relatively small perhaps when you are a scientist but are a big deal when you have something that's already on the market. So um, FDA and clinical trials and clinical trial strategy will be also something that you'll learn in our program. So in summary then, commercializing a, a medical innovation is complex. You have to be thinking about all of these things in parallel, intellectual property, reimbursement, how are you um, going to monetize your product, the regulatory pathways, um, and that's all in parallel with what your workflow is in terms of um, testing and innovations and building up your market. So basically a great idea has to go through this very, uh, you know, um, in parallel, um, strategic thinking until you get to um, the end of clinical use. So that brings us to our mission. So the MTM mission is to provide engineers as well as clinicians and scientists um, the engineering business and biomedical training that's necessary to take a new medical innovation from initial idea into clinical use. So as a program, we're gonna to work to demystify that process and give you the broad knowledge, tools, and the skills to take on um, this process. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Joy. Yeah, so as you saw in our mission statement, we draw from a wide range of backgrounds, right? Not only in our student body, but also in our curriculum. So you'll see we have engineers and scientists and clinicians all coming together to work on our real world problem, right? So this capstone project that you'll be working on for the entire year is a cross-functional interdisciplinary team. Um, and that's just something that's absolutely foundational to this program because um, it takes all different, you know, lenses to see the problem in full and to see any sort of you know, obstacles in the way or definitely opportunities on adding these projects. So we have the diverse population of students that I'll talk about in a, miss, in a minute and also the curriculum. So it kind of mirrors the reality of what's going on in health tech innovation, right? When you come together and work on a team. Um, so if you go to the next slide. Um, so you can see on this chart that our students come from a variety of different backgrounds. And this is how we help build our cohorts to foster this cross-functional teamwork. So it's more than just a buzzword, right? It's really like, these are our students. They come from, you know, we have a MDs, we have people from the life sciences, biology, um, biomedical engineering, and other engineering. So, um, you can see that like over time there we've added on a lot more uh, students from different backgrounds and that just creates such a rich environment for our students to come and learn and work with people from very different backgrounds towards like the shared goal right on the capstone project um, you also see that you know as we continue to grow as a cohort, we still maintain relatively small. So you really have this like intimate setting where you're going to really get to know your cohort overall and also really take a deep dive and work really closely with the, the other students on your capstone project. 
So in the same way that we draw from like our diverse student body and our diverse curriculum, um, we also draw upon the strengths of where we're physically located, right? So we have two different campuses that we're a part of, UC Berkeley and UCSF or San Francisco. And that's another thing that makes us unique. You're enrolled in both schools. Um, so you get to take advantage of all the expertise and resources that these two campuses have. So it, the amount of available knowledge and resources that are available to you is just immense. Um, it does involve commuting across the bay, as you can see. There's no quick, easy way to jump across that water. Um, but those, the, what you get out of those environments is, I would say, Par none. It's, it's very unique in that manner. So our program, if you go to the next slide, resides in the BioE, Bioengineering Department at Berkeley. Um, and that's where I am housed. And also the Bioengineering and Therapeutic Sciences Department at um, UCSF. So you get a lot more of that clinical perspective at UCSF. You know, it is one of the top medical schools in the country. And a lot of teaching faculty are surgeons or um, MDs. And then you also have the richness of the Berkeley, the engineering, the technical, you know, we're rated, depending on the year and who you talk to, number one or number two public school in the country. So this is what your year kind of lays out and looks like on a broad scope. Um, it's a 10 month program, so it runs from August to June and it's very fast paced. Um, you arrive and you start your um, orientation and engineering leadership bootcamp straight away. So if you look at some of the milestones, um, we start in August. So, and we even start before the fall semester at Berkeley starts with engineering leadership coursework. Then you start work, you know, your coursework at Berkeley and then UCSF starts. And so there's another layer in addition of more coursework. Um, so between those times, once you're up and running between, uh, in between the fall semester at Berkeley and the fall semester at UCSF, those are when the capstone projects get it started. Um, and some of those, those projects are expanded for the entire year and runs all the way to June, even though the Berkeley semester ends in May. So there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of timelines to keep track of um, as the year goes on, but this is kind of how it lays out. In December, we have um, our capstone showcase. Um, and then in June, we have our final capstone symposium. So let's drill down a little bit into um, the details of what makes up that core curriculum and how that diversity also expands in that matter. Great, thanks, Joy. So our curriculum reflects um, and reinforces um, the broad skills that medical innovators need. Um, it gives you a breadth of knowledge and skills. So if you're looking for a more deep technical engineering focus, then this would not be the program for you. So we have some engineers that say, oh, I'm really looking to do a lot more benchtop work and testing. You'll be doing some of that with your capstone but this program, if you're looking for something that really is going to either launch you into industry or help you as a healthcare worker, um, either continue to work in your job and also work with innovators, um, that's a great path as well. Um, and you'll get that because you can see here in the different areas um, with a total of 24 units total, you're going to be split between engineering and technical but then also eight semester units of business and entrepreneurship, um, your capstone project, of course, which is that center, and then uh, clinical needs and strategies, which is six, six um, semester credit units. So our uh, presentation here is based on what we usually talk about is semester credit units. units. Um, at UCSF, when you go on and start looking at courses, you'll see that they're on the quarter system, but we transfer the units into semester credits so that um, you're able to get this 24 units total. The centerpiece is this capstone project that Joy mentioned. 
and it pervades and runs through every course. Our students were just assigned um, their capstone projects. These come from industry, and so they're just now um, getting into working on those and preparing for the uh, showcase in December that Joy mentioned. So um, our core classes um, are listed here in this uh, circle. Um, basically, we start, um, if we start here at the top, we've got clinical needs-based therapies and solutions, ethical and social issues in translational medicine, uh, translational challenges in diagnostic and device therapeutics. And then going on around here, we've got designing clinical research for industry, translational challenges in medicine, uh, project management. That's uh, the course that I teach um, over the course of the entire year um, and healthcare finance and economics. So you'll see that um, you can take, um, let me just step back a little bit. So what it does is this allows you to connect um, with what your career or professional interests are within the coursework. Some students get very excited about more into the clinical um, aspects. Some really get excited and really wanna focus more on the business aspects, just as an example. And you can take uh, classes at UCSF and at Berkeley. So obviously the um, mandatory classes that I laid out on the previous page or across both campuses, but then you um, in your um, classes that you have as electives can take further classes um, and it could be at either campus. So these are just a few examples of some areas of interest that students explore, um, but they also take classes in public health um, uh, and a subset of our Haas um, MBA courses um, are also available, data science and computer science, um, so there's extremely broad range. It's almost, um, I think if anything, our students have said it's almost like too much. They feel like, how can I pack this all in in 10 months? Well, you you can't, you need to be able to like pick and kind of focus on classes. So you will definitely find courses that are going to excite you um, with instructors that are some of the best um, in the world in their field. And that's why we feel MTM is a great program for for folks that really want to get um, into industry and understand how you do this translational medicine thing. Um, some other programs you may have heard of, um, like what has this compared to? Uh, uh, other universities also call it translational medicine. Some have similar programs that are called biodesign. It's all about basically understanding this full breadth of knowledge for taking um, things from, from concept into um, product. So the real world capstone projects, um, for an example, you're gonna be assessing um, unmet clinical needs, like what's really going on out there right now in the market and uh, the products that you're given, you don't have to come up with them yourself. We start with projects that are from industry or from academia that have a clinical need in mind. So you will go and assess those clinical needs um, determine the breadth of them, um, work alongside the uh, innovators in developing novel technologies and product development. Um, you'll also work on a business plan, regulatory strategy, and even clinical strategy. And the mentorship that you get with between UC Berkeley and UCSF is just uh, phenomenal. It's, I, I can't say that it's um, you know, anywhere else that you're going to find it in the world. You're going to get clinicians, you're going to get corporate executives, people with backgrounds such as mine, people with deep scientific knowledge such as Dr. Shuvo Roy. Make sure you look him up as well. He's been working for years on the Kidney Project, which is a fantastic um, medical device um, research base, but you know that will eventually become real world. We also have executives that come um, and speak regularly, um, and so I think you'll be really excited about the uh, people that are involved as well as the projects. So let me, um, in terms of project selection, like I said, it comes from um, academia as well as industry. Um, these are vetted by our MTM program for suitability uh, in terms of uh, a learning platform for the students. And um, the mentors then pitch to the students and have input on what projects they're most excited about and they feel um, meets kind of their background and their needs. You then submit interest and then uh, we build the teams from there based on uh, Dr. Roy and I and the students input. 
we typically try to get about twice as many capstone pitches as the projects that we know we need to have for the size of the cohort. And this is um, the cohort, depending on the size, um, makes you know the projects you know more numerous or less because each capstone um, has three to four students on it. We found that's the best size of a team for being able to meet and schedule things and also be able to dot, divide up the work um, you know, based on all these different broad areas that need to be um, dived into. So the capstone project sponsors for this year um, are listed here. Multiplex Thera is an early stage uh, company. Uh, Neurotype, Eyes, uh, Pyramus has worked with us before. So they're doing um, a second um, product, uh, second, I shouldn't say prototype, it's gonna be a second generation product for a different market. Um, and then Safe Beat RX um, is actually a Minnesota based company. But a lot of these projects um, are held rem you know, either remotely or in person or a combination. I know with Safe Beat RX, their, um, their uh, main project sponsor is uh, flies out here every few weeks to meet with our students. And then this year we also have um, at least a couple projects that are from UCSF, um, from the Center for Intelligent Imaging, and then the other one from the Voice and Swallowing Center. So um, that's most, but not all of our capstone projects. So we have nine this year. Um, but uh, let's see, I think, yeah, I'm just looking at the timing here since we just hit two, um, 1130. Um, if um, each of you, Ahmad and Ionica, if you could just give a 30 second to a minute overview of your um, capstone project, that would be great for our listeners and viewers. Sure. Okay, great. Awesome, I'll go ahead. So um, I uh, work with Paramis on my um, capstone project as listed on the bottom left corner. So what their technology is, it's a continuous non-invasive non blood pressure sensor that's comfortable, easy to use, and applicable for both inpatient and outpatient care. So for our project, uh, our capstone project, we are investigating the market and proposing a business plan for the feasibility of at-home care for the elderly with this technology. And um, you know, we're working closely with the um, executive team at Paramez, and um, I'm pretty excited about it. It's a very cool technology. Great. Thanks, Amon. How about Ionica? Can you tell us about, about yours? Of course. Uh, OK, so first, I want to say that I am working with an excellent team um, of scientists and engineers in the MTM cohort, and we are working with a group of medical doctors from the UCSF Voice and Swallowing Center to develop a device that will standardize the testing of throat sensation in patients who suffer from uh, voice, airway, and swallowing disorders. So we'll be prototyping, uh, doing market research, IP development, uh, patent research, and perhaps even uh, laying the foundation for what a clinical trial for this device could look like. And I also just want to point out that Christian is joining us here today. Oh, great. Awesome. Christian, um, are you, if you're ready, could you tell us, because you have a, also a really interesting capstone, can you tell us about um, about your capstone and, and how your team started? Yeah, sure. And thank you, Annika. Um, so uh, mine is the on the multi multiplex Thera company, and we're doing a, a, a drug design project that basically involves uh, screening a bunch of small molecules um, um, for cancer therapies and then testing them uh, in vitro um, starting soon. We are actually part of our job is to set the regulatory pathway for what that's gonna look like um, and kind of how the IP is going to go around some of these small molecule uh, drugs. And yeah, that's great. I'll also shout out to my team. Uh, we also have an amazing team of people. Um, and to Annika's point, really excited to be working with all of them. Great. Um, yeah, and Chris, Christian joined us a little bit later, but his, he um, came instead of an engineering background with a chemistry background. Is it chemistry or chemical engineering? Chemistry, right? Chemistry and philosophy. I definitely hit that, hit that space of um, odd backgrounds 
Uh, yes. And yeah, apologies, I came late uh, out of a public health class. No worries. So we, we do a lot of different things. Yeah, so Christian, I know has been just for folks who are kind of not really sure whether, you know, where they want to go with their career. Um, public health in public policy is one area that uh, Christian has been really interested in. And, um, and, uh, and he's working with a team that's uh, got some folks that are in engineering background, as well as um, one of the, I think one of the MDs or pharmacists is in your team. So, um, yeah. so really this cross-functional background in terms of diversity. So, okay, you'll also um, learn from industry experts. So I put myself on here because I have been in industry, like I said, almost my whole career. Um, the last four going on five years has been with uh, teaching, as well as um, I continue to consult to uh, startups in industry. Dan Burnett, if you look him up on LinkedIn, um, like I said, um, with myself, feel free to look me up, connect with me. I'm happy to um, chat further. I usually check LinkedIn at least uh, once every other day, if not more. Um, Dan Burnett uh, lectures regularly at UCSF. He's the resident and entrepreneur, um, and he's started uh, several companies um, but you'll also have folks from Experian Group to talk about uh, regulatory affairs and uh, basically regulatory worldwide. Um, people with law from the uh, Levine um, Bagad Han LLP um, to learn about um, intellectual property and patent and trademark law. And then on the um, scientific side, we've got Dr. Shubo Roy. Uh, who is the faculty director at UCSF for the MTM program. Like I mentioned, he has been working for years um, with plenty of awards on the kidney project, which is creating an implantable bioartificial kidney as a permanent solution to kidney failure. And then Dr. Dorian Leitman, he is our um, faculty director over here at UC Berkeley. He's also our bioengineering chair, um, and he has a large uh, background in um, Berkeley Sensors and Actuator Center. Um, and he's got some um, patents that I was just talking to him about uh, yesterday, actually saying that we should see if we can get um, one of them, uh, his projects into uh, our MTM as a capstone. Um, so a little bit about Professor Leitman, um, since I mentioned Shubo Roy with his uh, background kidney project, um, his interests uh, have include biomems, microfluid dynamics, um, hemodynamics um, associated with valvular heart disease and also other cardiac and arterial flows. So both great folks that you um, will have direct access to and teaching from. And we have a mix of great students that were, um, this is from I think a year or two ago, um, but a mix of curriculum, capstones, and network are really what makes MTM special. That's why I love to be here and excited to move this program forward. Um, the students are really, I think someone asked me, um, one of our students was doing a, um, an interview with me and she said, well, what's the, your favorite thing about MTM? And I, that was easy, it's the students. Uh, you guys coming into the program are what make this special. You come from all kinds of diverse backgrounds um, in the world, in your life, in terms of your training and education. Um, that's what makes this a fantastic program. You basically get like a, like a little mini cross-functional team of learning. And these are the friends and connections that you will have for life. These will be your connections through LinkedIn that will help you find jobs together uh, with our, our faculty and staff here. And we would love to have you join us. So look how we have grown. Um, we welcomed our largest cohort yet, which was actually last year. Um, this went back to, uh, I think with COVID, we've really seen a lot of ups and downs, but um, we are so excited to be back in person. Um, I just see us being able to do more things in the labs again. Um, some of our labs, uh, as we, Joey and I were going through and cleaning out things, uh, a couple of our spaces were like, these little time capsules. And then I had to remind myself, oh yeah, we, we've been in COVID for like two or three years. So um, with that, I'd like to open it up 